It's Monday, August 10th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And on Friday, 8 August, we lost yet another air tanker, this time overseas. On Friday, 8 August, a Canadair CL215 water bomber was lost while fighting a fire near Lindoso, Portugal, right on the Spanish border in the Pineda Gerez National Park. The 65-year-old pilot from Portugal was killed. The 39-year-old Spanish co-pilot survived with serious injuries. Initial reports indicate that the CL215 had just scooped up another load of water, I assume off the Lindoso Reservoir located right next to the fire, and was proceeding to the fire to drop a load of water across the head of the fire, that's the, the front of the fire, the active part of the fire, when it impacted the terrain. Looking at the pictures, it looks like it impacted rugged terrain, steep rugged terrain near the top of a ridge crossing. A little bit more about the aircraft and the contractor. The aircraft is owned and operated and contracted out by Babcock International. Babcock is a UK-based national and civil defense contractor. And they do a lot of different things, but one of, the, one of the, the things that that company does is firefighting, specializing in the use of the CL-215 and 415 water bombers. They have a fleet of about 100 aircraft altogether, including various fixed-wing helicopters, light aircraft and medium-sized aircraft, and 400 personnel. Babcock primarily contracts out overseas to Spain, Portugal, and Italy. You'll see the water bombers flying throughout the Mediterranean from Babcock International. They also recently got a 2019 contract to begin operations in Manitoba, Canada, using seven water bombers and three twin commanders. A little bit more about the CL215 and I'll have some links down below that have some excellent descriptive videos of this aircraft. The CL215 is one of the only uniquely specifically designed aircraft designed specifically for putting out wildfires. Most fire retardant dropping aircraft are converted aircraft initially using World War II bombers and going on to today to where you see uh, modern day transport jets being converted for the role of firefighting. The CL215 and 415 series aircraft developed by Canadair initially in the 1960s was specifically designed for water bombing of fires. First let's back up and talk a little bit about water bombing versus retardant. Each of these different aircraft that you see in firefighting operations is another tool in the toolbox. Each different aircraft, size of aircraft, has a specific role that it excels at on the firefighter. There's no one aircraft that's the best overall for the entire job of fighting wildland fire. Out west here, in our conditions, we prefer aircraft that use retardant, that can drop retardant. We have a large network established of aerial retardant reload bases where these aircraft can quickly reload and return to the fire. In places like Canada and over in Europe, they don't have the large infrastructure of retardant bases, so it's easier for them to use water bombing aircraft. The disadvantage with water bombing aircraft is that you're just dropping water. Water is great for direct attack on a fire, putting out flames, but it does not very effective for the indirect attack, which will slow the, where aerial retardant will slow the rate of burn and spread of the fire and give ground forces time to get in there and properly build line around the fire. So there's a big difference between dropping water and dropping retardant on a fire and each has its place. The neat thing about the water bombers is that they, in the right conditions, like in this situation, they're able to quickly turn around. That is, they're able to quickly scoop up another load of water and return to the fire and drop it. And they can drop a number of loads in a short amount of time, much quicker than a retardant bomber can if he's got to go a ways to reload. 
Typically, typically you'll see these water bombers operating in tandem, working together as a team, dropping on the fire. The CL215 is the old radial engine water bomber with the uh, Pratt & Whitney 2800 radial engines. That's 2,800 cubic inches, a twin row of nine cylinders, uh, putting out about 2,100 horsepower. The aircraft carries about 1,200 gallons of water, and it can scoop that water up in a matter of seconds using a couple of small scoops that retract and extend just behind the, the step in the hull of the aircraft. See, I'll show you in the videos here in the links below. But it still requires about three quarters of a mile of clear way on a reservoir to approach, touch down, scoop up, and take off to get a full load of water, but it can reload in a matter of uh, 8 to 12 seconds. The CL215 aircraft were eventually retrofitted with turbine engines, and then Canada Air has now developed the CL415 or turbine version of this same aircraft using the Pratt & Whitney 100 engines, which put out something on the order of close to 5,000 horsepower apiece. The CL215 with its radial engines requires a almost the full-time work of the pilot in the right seat to maintain the temperatures on the engines. M maintain, take care of, baby, the round engines. These round engines are subject to a, a, a lot of hard work in the firefighting environment, low altitude, low speeds, and so it takes almost the full attention of a second crew member just to monitor and manage that engine and their temperatures as you go along. Now, regarding the accident, the first question any accident investigator who is familiar with air tanker operations is going to ask is, where is the load? Did this aircraft crash with a full load or were they able to emergency jettison the load before the crash? The first thing every air tanker pilot knows to do or is trained to do in the event of a malfunction while fighting fires is to jettison the load, dump the load. Every firefighting air tanker aircraft is required by design to be able to jettison their load in about one to two seconds. They got to have a emergency drop design built into the aircraft with just the touch of a switch. So many times when investigating these air tanker accidents, often that load does not get jettisoned before the crash happens. Why? Any number of reasons. These, these, these situations develop very quickly. The startle factor, you get diverted your attention gets diverted to f trying to figure out what's the matter with the aircraft when the very first reaction's got to be dump the load. So that's the first question investigators will be finding out was, was this crew able to jettison the load before they hit the ground? Looking at the pictures of the downed aircraft in the rugged terrain, it looks like the number one engine, a couple of the propeller blades may be in the feathered position and one of them is not. What we learned from the B-17 crash is that it's difficult to tell on these Hamilton standard propellers the condition of the engine just by looking at some pictures from the initial accident as these propellers, the, the gears inside of these propellers can easily be stripped and broken on impact and can alter the pitch of the props from the crash. We can't tell exactly what the condition of the engine was just by looking at those pictures. But it, and another catch with the CL215 is these engines are shoulder mounted. These props, it looks to me like they didn't hit the ground at all. Usually when a propeller strikes a ground under power, it leaves telltale marks for investigators to determine what if these engines were developing power when they hit the ground and how much power they were developing. Over in Portugal, this represents the fifth fatality that they've had so far in fighting fires over there. Four fatalities from ground personnel have already occurred in this year's fire fighting season in Portugal. So as we get more information, we'll let you know. Keep you posted on the comment section below. If anybody has firefighting experience in the CL215, we'd love to hear about your experiences with that aircraft in the comment section below. Thanks again so much for your support of this channel over on Patreon and PayPal that makes this content possible. Thank you for your support. See you here. Thank you.